I'll make you feel as if you're eating the first cheeseburger you ever ate. The cheap one your parents could barely afford. Show me. Bonjour, everyone. Hope you are all very well. As you may know, I am a big fan of thematically rich films. I love a movie that has a lot of fun, exciting concepts while also giving you plenty to reflect on and think about if you so choose to do so. So seeing the trailer for The Menu, I was very intrigued by the potential this film had, and although I didn't get to see it in theaters, it's now on streaming and I watched it first chance I got. So if you haven't seen it, fair warning, there will be some spoilers involved here as we take a deeper look into this film. Good evening. Good evening. I found the menu to be incredibly fun and very captivating. Although the characters at times can be a little over the top and annoying, most of the time they bring funny elements to the film and by the end you actually begin to sympathize with them as they're thrown into this horrible situation. The basic premise of the plot involves a group of varied, high-class individuals going to a remote island for a dining experience they will never forget. Only, things start to go awry when the staff at the restaurant reveal themselves to have dire plans for the night. We're all gonna die tonight. Isn't that right? Yes, sir! The movie does make it known why those particular clients are there at the end, and you're given some thought on the deservedness of everything. All of the characters have flaws in their stature, whether relationships, wealth, status, fame, or praise. They are all either taking it for granted, doing immoral things to obtain it, or treating others unjustly to boost their esteem. So the ending feels all the more satisfying with the one character we get that is grounded in reality surviving. Aaron, or Margot, is extremely relatable and brought so much emotion to the film. Seeing her toy with and humble Julian was also so satisfying. I very much love Anya Taylor-Joy as well. The other character who brought so much life to the film was Chef Julian. Man, that eccentric, strict, passionate demeanor he comes with, slowly hinting and eventually turning into sinister, was so well done. Props to Ralph Fiennes because I was on the edge of my seat. Seeing everything turn into chaos was both satisfying, fascinating, and horrific. All of the diners just unsure on where to draw the line, wanting to believe it's all some brilliant art piece or performance for the experience. Then eventually it gets to the point where they can't question it any longer, and it's just madness. Honestly, I think my biggest gripe with the film was probably Tyler. A very necessary plot in the movie, and it was also very necessary to grow dislike for him. He was almost too annoying though, like to the point where he was basically a caricature of the concept they went for. Him denying everything to the T and being so unfazed, it was just off-putting. The scene where he's embarrassed by the chef is incredible, but I just would have liked them to tone it back a dial or two on him leading up to that point. To be fair, I don't see how anyone could really like him in this film, especially after the reveal that he knew all along. The movie follows such an absurd, entertaining plot that can be too much or a bit ridiculous, but what makes it work is absolutely the characters and the cast who plays them. To me, the film, the narrative, themes, and plot all revolve around these characters. In part, their relationship to society and this little culinary biome they're in. I do like the sense of it being a sort of biome of culinary ideas. Right, like the characters are meant to be these obnoxious, pretentious snobs in order to drive forth the theme revolving around our main character, Margot, and head chef, Julian. While this whole dining experience is going on, it's so damn funny seeing all of the clients trying not to freak out. They're playing it off as brilliant performance or higher understanding for culinary art, since all of them are basically pretending to be smarter than they actually are. It just makes total sense. But getting to the individual characters, we start to see a reoccurring theme between them all. First, we have the old couple who takes their luxuries for granted. They continually dine at this lavish restaurant while never actually appreciating what they're eating. They can't even remember one meal they had after 11 times. Mr. Liebrand, kindly name one dish you ate the last time you were here. Cod. Cod? It wasn't cod, you donkey. There's the douche squad, as I like to call them. They didn't earn the right to be there, but they treat the staff like shit and act pretentious anyways. 
They get handed stuff in life, and they act like they're better than others for no reason. Yeah, baby. We're pathetic, aren't we? Oh my god, dude. Somebody shoot us. Then we have Lillian and Ted, who might be the most obnoxious out of anyone. Lillian being a critic who will break down others' work to the T and ruin their lives just to boost her own ego, always finding something to dislike and centering everything around herself. And then there's Ted, who's also deservingly in the same group because he's an enabler. He tries to act like Lillian and just feeds her empty praise, seeing nothing wrong with what they're doing. There are restaurants that I reviewed that all closed. Like a gag, then? Um, I think so. And then there's Georgie and Felicity, who maybe come across as the most likable to me, but they also have their own flaws. Georgie is a failing movie star who tries to use these high class functions as a front to gain clout and popularity rather than actually enjoying the work and experience of others. And Felicity is someone who's had a life handed to her on a silver spoon, and she continues to chase this life of luxury and fame through any means necessary, even if it means being a leech to the most famous person she could find and just stealing his money. And I close my eyes and I fake an orgasm and then off to South Africa and then I maybe I talk about how Racism is not so cool and bingo bongo, Emmy time. And then the last of the obnoxious guests is Tyler. Someone who pretends like he's more than he is, critiquing others' work and acting like he's just as smart, if not smarter, than those around him. He watched some people cook on the internet and knows the name of certain techniques, but he fails to have any further knowledge or experience. He gets focused on the outside perspective of everything, while not actually experiencing it, as we see him constantly as one of those people who's taking photos before they eat, and wanting so badly to be respected by the chef. He desperately wants acknowledgement that he knows what he's doing, despite not knowing anything. Uh, no, sh sh shit, would you like some shit? No, uh, there's a new, uh, a new dicing method of which we have been woefully ignorant. And then we move on to the chef and the staff, who I think bring forth the most thematically rich elements to the film. Striving for perfection, dedicating your life into the craft to the point of obsession, serving these rich people who have taken all your work for granted, but still putting in constant effort for the empty appraisal to reach the top, without actually realizing what you've lost along the way. Seeing Chef Julian lose sight of why he started his career in the first place resonated quite a bit. The display of his life divulging into madness as all of his passion fades away was so very tragic. I think the staff's downfall is their dedication to be exactly like Chef. Even while they see the lifestyle and chaos that comes with being in his position, the long hours, the somber nights, the mental struggle striving for perfection while never getting any true gratification from those around you. Despite all of the signs they should get out, they continue to follow behind him off the cliff and drown in that pool of sorrow. They too enable this behavior from the rich, letting slow burn resentment build up, but never breaking the chain because they themselves want it all as well. The mess you make of your life, of your body, of your sanity, by giving everything you have to pleasing people you will never know. So finally we see Margot, the only character who sees the ridiculousness in the environment around her. While everyone is trying so desperately to fit in and act like they should be there, Margot is there for something to do. She doesn't care if the food is shitty or not, she's just being her honest, true self. Julian is so fascinated with her not only from the relatability he gets, her being someone in the service industry and their brief discussion on passion and enjoyment for the work they do, but he also becomes obsessed with who she is as Julian strives for perfection in everything and having a guest show up who isn't what he planned, but not only that, a guest that doesn't care to be there for anything aside from going out to dinner and eating good food. Not someone who will give empty praise for anything, regardless of how obscure and unappetizing it may be, but someone who wants food at its core. A fulfilling meal that you could appreciate for the basic elements of what food should be. Throughout the whole movie, Margot is a constant reminder to Chef of what he's missing in his life, so it makes the ending all the more better. You haven't touched your food. There... there is no food. Like everything in the movie, there's lighthearted comedic tones overlapping the rich themes underlying. Having the climax to the film involve Julian cook a basic American cheeseburger for Margot was both hilarious and incredibly heartfelt. Now that is a cheeseburger. Yeah, that is a cheeseburger. 
I mean, it's stupid. The concept of the movie is silly. This psycho maniac chef entrapping all these eccentric, snobby people and presenting them with absurd, over-the-top dishes and art pieces while he slowly reveals they're all gonna die, it's nuts. But the sentimental feeling I get from watching Chef cook this damn burger, and for him to smile for what feels like the first time in this film is wonderful. It's true bliss on his face, and when she asks for a to-go bag, something I'm sure not many, if at all, has asked him to do in a long time, he gets emotional, and you can see that crack in the armored shell he's had for so long. It's such a great moment, and there's plenty of emotion to be felt throughout the film. Any film that could elicit a wide range of emotions, for me, deserves praise. My favorite film last year was Everything Everywhere All at Once, for the exact same reasons. The balance of everything is such a big plus to what makes it work. Despite myself working in the food industry, I have never really watched many culinary-based movies, but this was an excellent showcase of the trials of any customer service job, really. There's a lot to relate for people in any service industry, and low-key, if you're having a rough day and dealt with some rude people, this might be the perfect movie to watch. It was all the more goofy in the end, having everyone go out in flames dressed as s'mores, while the head chef Julian rambles on how disgusting of a creation the s'more is, with such unpalatable ingredients. I guess it makes it ironic and fitting, considering Chef is trying to make a showstopper dish out of the s'more, while he uses these people we've been showing to be less than desirable, who on a metaphorical basis would be considered the bad ingredients of humans. The film's final shot wraps up perfectly, seeing Margot truly enjoying the basic quality of the cheeseburger made by Julian as she looks out at the island that is presumably up in flames. There is a lot to be said about the layers to this film. While none of the higher class members can actually savor not only the food, but everything that supposedly comes with the status they strive for, the only person who actually ends up reaping the rewards out of life is the one person who wasn't caught up in the chase. There was no worry about fitting in or forcing yourself to enjoy something you don't actually like. No ego, no need for acceptance or praise. Truly, no worries to be anything but yourself. In the end, she was the only one who gained appreciation out of the experience, because it didn't have to be perfect. At the end, she was just happy with the simple cheeseburger. I hope you had a good time diving into this wacky ride of a film with me. I found this to be everything I wanted and more. It was genuinely a lot of fun. Since this is technically considered a horror movie, it's just another feather in the cap of what may be one of, if not the best year for the genre. Speaking of great horror movies from 2022, we will be taking a look at X soon. A rewind to the past with a perfect slasher film reminiscent of the classics like Friday the 13th, Halloween, and Nightmare on Elm Street. Until then, I hope you have a wonderful day. Peace. You told him it was my birthday? Seemed funny about three hours ago.